This week in AI was absolutely incredible. There was a major breakthrough that many people haven't picked up on, and it is about to change many different industries. And from that to ChatGPT to Dolly 3, there are many things that happened this week that will fundamentally change the future of not only AI, but some other technological developments that you will likely see within the coming years. So this is one of the things that has recently changed the game in terms of a major breakthrough in terms of computer vision. This is 3D Gaussian splatting for real-time radiance field rendering. So in this research paper, they outline a new, more efficient method of generating these things called nerfs, and they use a different technique, which is like nerfs, but is far more efficient, can run at higher frames per second, and is just pretty crazy. So on screen right now, what you're seeing is real-time footage of essentially photography scans that someone has taken, you know, someone's taken several pictures of, and then they've input it into the software, and now we have this as 3D data. The reason this is pretty game-changing is because if you look at this with past examples, you can see on this page right here that the past examples such as Nerf and the others ones as Instant NGP just aren't as high quality. And, you know, there's going to be a video clip from some other YouTubers where they just show you how crazy this jump is because they did a real demo and um, they essentially showcased just how crazy this technology is. Now, I can only do so much because I'm only using images and of course it is 3D and you're watching this video, but I promise you when I tell you that this is pretty crazy, okay? And the reason I've included this in today's video is because I think in terms of computer vision, it is a very important part of the technological landscape, especially if we are talking about AI. Because one thing about AI is that there are small and different parts that can be intertwined with other technologies, such as robotics and with computer vision. So imagine combining this software with something like a large language model that is specifically made for this, it would definitely be very interesting to see what can happen. Now, many people are thinking about the possibilities in terms of gaming, because this could make photorealistic games really possible since the frame rate is extremely high. Unreal Engine plugin. you got all the details here too. Can you go closer to the edges though? That's where I think if you were to do close up shots of this, we might have some trouble. Yeah. Right. Because you can see the oh, artifacts yeah. around yeah. there. Let's try. We've been promised by the guys who released the paper of Gaussian splats, that the this quality build. is higher than nerfs. Farad, are you ready? One, two, three. Move around it. Dude. What? Dude. Man, look at it. Dude, I have every single angle. I feel like Superman. Look at that. Dude, I can't. I think Dude, we already achieved perfect so overall based on the demos and examples that you've seen hopefully you can gain an understanding of what this is and why this is pretty crazy i do think that if this is something that does come to video games or other applications it will be very interesting to see how this is applied and i do think that when i look at the footage that i am seeing it is really indistinguishable from actual pictures so the next thing that we have here is of course tesla ai now if you don't know tesla is the same car company that now produces robots now here's the thing they've been working on this for just over two years or maybe even more years than that but we're starting to see rapid developments in not only the ai but their humanoid robot. So what we're seeing here is Tesla's Optimus. Now, what's crazy about this robot is that you can see that its neural net runs entirely on board using only vision, which is crazy, okay? That point in itself is something that a lot of companies are striving to do. Everybody knows the GPT-4 and ChatGPT 3.5s, their servers are essentially really huge and their running costs were so much so that they not only had to dumb down GPT-4, but they also had to make sure that GPT-4 was only limited to around you know, like 25 messages every three hours, okay? Because the amount of people requesting that service was too much. And of course, the compute was just too much in terms of the cost for OpenAI. Now, if you can get an AI, a large language model, whatever sort of model that you are running, on an actual robot that can work with the robot and use the vision to essentially convert that into robot actions, then you have a real winner. And that is what we have with Tesla Optimus. We can see this robot managing to sort items all autonomously and autonomous behavior is what is the next step in terms of AI control because it allows the robot to do stuff without human intervention. You know, the need for constant updates, for constant interference, um, and without pre-programming many of the stuff. Now, many of you might say this is not anything new, this isn't crazy, but trust me when I tell you, it actually is. You see, the nuance in difference between robots from now and robots before is that many robots that could do stuff were always pre-programmed to do that. They weren't thinking, they weren't autonomous, they weren't not in a sense alive, but they weren't actually 
doing the task. They were just doing a programmed preset of actions, but these robots are autonomous. They can react to changes. They aren't like the factory ones where a specific thing is always going to be there. This is why this is truly innovative. And of course, as you know, this is just the beginning. So that means that, you know, in the next 10, 20, 30, even 40 years, I can't imagine what these robots are going to look like, especially since we do know that not only are Tesla investors super long-term holders, but there are billions and billions of dollars now flowing into the AI industry and of course, robotic. Because people are predicting that these industries are going to be worth trillions and trillions of dollars. So it will be interesting to see how these robots are going to be in terms of where they head. And also you can see that the Tesla bot does actually have really, really sturdy balance which is something that is very important because robots, as you know, do tend to fall over quite some time. Now, the reason I find this very, very interesting is not only the fact that was Elon Musk being ridiculed for his previous performances in terms of the Tesla Optimus not being ready, it's shocking to see that they managed to combine this with AI so quickly based on what we've seen so far. And of course, now adding vision. Then, of course, we had Meta produce a whole host of many different things related to AI. There is so much stuff that I'm not sure if I'm going to include it in this entire video, but what you're about to see is Meta collaborating with Ray-Ban and they've essentially created something that is very, very futuristic. And not only that, the price of this product is relatively cheap to the point where you or me could actually purchase this item. So take a look at this. I think this is really cool. And not only is this just a standard product, it is also one of the new AI driven products. We are starting to see a whole wave of not just AI driven applications and software, but physical products that now have LLMs on board, including vision and of course, conversation being slowly rolled out into our environment. I wonder if these products are going to be just a fad or they're actually going to be something that become part of our future in terms of what we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So take a look. The next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. <laughs> these are the first smart glasses that are built and shipping with Meta AI in them. Starting in the US, you're gonna get this state-of-the-art AI that you can interact with hands-free wherever you go. We're gonna be issuing a free software update to the glasses that makes them multimodal. So the glasses are gonna be able to understand what you're looking at when you ask them questions. So if you wanna know what the building is that you're standing in front of, um, or if you want to translate a sign that's in front of you to know what it's saying, um, or if you need help fixing this sad, leaky faucet. Um, you can basically just you know, talk to Meta AI and look at it and it'll walk you through it step by step how to do it. Um, we, we built in one more feature into these smart glasses. You are going to be able to live stream to your friends and followers from your glasses. Everybody is ready to race and I am getting ready too. Let's go. Switching to glasses. Being able to share you know, what you're doing live with your friends and, and followers while staying completely in the moment is the kind of thing that you can only do on, on smart glasses. So, all right, these Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, we're launching them on October 17th. I'm uh, starting at $2.99 and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all think of them. And of course, in the Meta Connect keynote speech by Mark Zuckerberg, we had some more information on Meta's AI chatbots. Now, I think it was interesting the kind of opportunity that he was going at here because it just shows that he's actually pretty decent at this strategy. Mark Zuckerberg knows that ChatGPT is already the leader and probably going to stay there for quite some time. So what he's opted to do is he's opted to take aim and fire some shots at character AI, which was pointed out in another video by AI Explained. So essentially, what we have here is Mark Zuckerberg having AI chatbots that contain the personalities of celebrities. So already leveraging the platform's fame with Instagram and combining that with open source large language models, potentially like Llama 2, depending on what they're running on, he's carved out this unique opportunity where users are going to be interacting with these celebrities in this AI chatbot style. Now, this has already proven to be quite popular already with companies like Character AI being valued at $5 billion. And those are just random characters from around the internet, from ones that the platform have created to user generated ones. So with that being said, take a look at this because I personally wouldn't use this because, you know, I would rather just ask ChatGPT or figure out the information myself. But I do think that this is going to have somewhat of a large appeal to maybe a niche audience or maybe a very large audience. And I think that this is definitely showing that Meta isn't one of those companies to take lightly. Then we have from image to live website using GPT-4 Vision and Replit in less than a minute. So this is pretty crazy because as you know, GPT-4 Vision has only been around for about a couple of days now, and it's already showing what the possibilities are. So this is just 
like the start and i mean this is the thing okay like people aren't really understanding what vision enables this large language model to do i mean you have to understand that this large language model is as smart as some of the smartest minds that have ever lived according to iq tests but the crazy thing is that now combined with vision you can do many different things now i was watching a video where the possibility of recursive self-improvement was discussed so for example let's say for example so for example let's say gpt4 in this example that you're currently watching on screen, you get it to design a website based on an image. It writes the code. Then of course, it can look at that image and then make a judgment call on whether this actually looks like what it was designed to do in the first place. And not only that, there are going to be a ton of different applications that are going to be built on top of GPT-4 Vision. So rather than people just using it to realize if their egg is well cooked or not, you know, you can literally use it to build a various different applications and software. It's just really, really surprising because now we're at the stage where, you know, we've moved from just large language models to large language models that are going to have vision. And here's the thing as well, is that now that GPT-4 has vision and you can literally create a website in seconds from just taking a picture at it, we're going to see other competitors also move into this space too. So if we take a look at this example right here, you can see that GPT-4 with a vision is able to decipher some text that is written in poorly overdone handwriting. It's pretty old and, you know, some people may not be able to decipher that, but with GPT-4 with a vision, it's able to do that pretty, pretty well. So, you know, the applications are just pretty crazy. And of course, we talked about, you know, healthcare applications where GPT-4 with a vision, if we get one that is trained on, you know, a specific number of health issues, for example, certain spots, certain rashes, certain things that only a large language model or large vision model or an AI that has seen millions of images is, is largely going to be more accurate than a doctor that's maybe only seen a few hundred or maybe a few thousand. One of the last ones of GPT-4 vision that I do want to show you is this example right here. And I want to show you this because it doesn't scare me, but it is very intriguing. It did scare me at first because there was one account on Twitter that I saw that did actually showcase as to why this is pretty crazy. You see, we always talk about how AI is not that thing. It's just a bunch of code that is outputting some basic code. And now we can see that this is a large language model that can clearly understand advanced concepts that are embedded in certain images. Okay, so you can see that it says right here, I'm glad we all agree. Oh, aha. I'm glad we all agree. So it says that this image portrays the concept of group dynamics and perspectives. And it really does understand exactly what is going on here. And I do think that, you know, if it was just a vision transformer, like it was just something that looks at an image and says what it is, it would have said that, you know, this is just an image with some characters on screen, but it shows, okay, that it clearly understands exactly what is on each panel and it describes it in detail. It says the last panel shows that after some discussion or thought, all have come to a consensus or shared understanding and they envision the same shape and the caption reaffirms, I'm glad we all agree. So I do think that while some people have said that these AIs aren't sentient and they aren't going to kill us or whatever, that is quite valid. But I do think that these AIs are definitely smarter than they do presume. And we aren't being told the full picture in terms of their full capabilities, because something that is able to understand these concepts and then present it in such a clear manner is definitely something that is smarter than we do think. Then, of course, this is absolutely crazy. I don't know why anyone hasn't talked about this, but this, OK, I think this is game changing. OK, so pay attention. All right. This is what we call video director GPT, consistent multi-scene video direction via large language model guided planning. So it says, although recent text to video generation methods have seen significant advancements, most of these works focus on producing short video clips of single event with single background. Meanwhile, large language models have demonstrated their capability in generating layouts and programs to control downstream visual modules such as image generation models. This raises an important question. Can we leverage the knowledge in these LLMs for consistent long video generation. So forget the jargon. Basically, what they're saying is, can we use large language models to perfect text to video? And essentially what they've done is they've input a scene that is done from a text to video model. Then they use the large language model, I'm guessing with a vision transformer to analyze the scene and see exactly what it is. Then they described it. So it's multi-sentence, the multi-scene video. So they've explained all the scenes. And then of course, okay, what they do is they use that large language model to re- create that video or to make that video properly. So you can see that it says fails to keep mouse throughout all scenes and then video GPT Rs, the mouse looks consistent through all scenes. So essentially they have an AI that essentially gets the data from the video and then ensures that this video is correct. And I think this is the right step that we need to move in because of course, text to video, you know, it, it's great, but this is where it is guys. So I think text to video in the next couple of months is going to have a huge update to where it's going to be much more accurate 
and this is why i said it's a huge breakthrough because i haven't really seen many people talk about this because of course text to video isn't getting that much information but you can see model scope text to video is very different to video director gpt okay um and i think that once these vision transformers and maybe even with chat gpt because chat gpt could be something you know i guess with dali 3 maybe you could get dali 3 and chat gpt maybe combine it with some of the things i'm pretty sure as long as chat gpt can create images with dali 3 it can definitely create videos as long as it can continually analyze those images i'm sure it could create videos that are of a high quality so um that is going to be pretty insane and I cannot wait for the more advancements in that. Then of course we had Genmo AI do replay, an AI model that can generate stunning videos from text and I think it is really good because not only is it smooth, the videos do look a lot better than some of their counterparts. Now of course like we just talked about, Video GPT along with some other models that are going to be developed is going to be insane because here's what happens. Once someone releases a research paper, essentially these other companies, they start to get to work, they start to build on that research paper and they start to build applications that you can use. So I think this week has been absolutely insane. There, of course, is some things that we did miss. If you do want us to do a newsletter where we can give you very best, the very best news and just dumb it down or essentially just explain it in as much clarity as possible, because lots of the time when you are looking at this stuff, there's a lot of technical jargon that does get in the way of you understanding exactly what is being done here. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, we'll see you in the next one.